Some games tell the truth and some games lie. This is five games that are lying to you. What's up everybody, my name is Nick Murphy. I'm one half of the Brothers Murphy and this is five games that are lying to you. Sometimes their cover shows you something and you're like, ooh, this game is that. They're not, they're a barrel full of lies. I can't take any more. Let's get into number five. Number five is Arboretum. You take one look at Arboretum and you know what that game is about. It's beautiful. It's got wonderful Beth Sobel art, beautiful trees of all different varieties and colors. So wonderful and it comes in a small little box. That way you know it's a wonderful, easy, elegant game. How relaxing, how zen. Maybe there's a butterfly in this Arboretum that will make your heart happy. You know what doesn't make my heart happy? Lives. And on top of that, the game is so simple. On your turn, you draw two cards. You could draw from the face down deck or from any of the face up discard piles. And then you take one of those cards and you place it in your Arboretum adjacent to another tree and the other card you discard to your face up discard pile. And that's it. So easy, so simple, such simple lies. Now, why is this game a lie? It's because the game will destroy your mind from the inside out. Yes, it's in a little box. Yes, it has wonderful Beth Sobel art, but this game will destroy your mind. Because to score these Arboretums, you need to have a line of cards, and the lines can zigzag around, but they need to start and end with the same species of tree, and they need to be going in ascending or descending order. So there's lots of different things for you to focus on in terms of where to put things, what things to put adjacent to each other. It's really, really difficult. But at the end of the game, only one person gets to score each species of tree. And how you decide that is whoever has the highest sum of that species of tree still in their hand at the end of the game, that player gets to score. So you need to put out as much as humanly possible, but you also need to keep enough in your hand so that you have the most of those cards. And that combination is just, it destroys your mind. You have to think in like the ninth dimension because you have to pay attention to all the adjacency. You have to pay attention to what's in everyone's arboretum. Like, okay, they have these cards, that means I think I have the highest sum of all of my cards, and it's just, it's so simple, but it just destroys your brain. It's not easy, relaxing, and zen, it's a forest full of lies. Number four is Bandito. In Bandito, you are all working together trying to stop the Bandito from escaping prison. The Bandito is digging out of six different places apparently simultaneously, which is also one of the biggest lies. Is this guy Doc Ock? But nonetheless, on your turn, you're gonna be playing out these cards with paths on them, and you're trying to loop the paths around to cut off that exit, or you can put out security guards, which are dead ends. If you successfully manage to block off all the different paths on the board, the players win the game. If by the end of the game, you run out of cards, and you haven't blocked off all the paths, the Bandito wins. And this game is great, and one of the best things about it is its size. Look at this tiny little box. This is how big the box is. And this is how big the game can get. The box size to table present size is absolutely bonkers. It's just ridiculous. Criminals lie, and so do the people who made this game. You think to yourself, oh yeah, we'll just bring this to like a restaurant or a bar or something like that. We only have a tiny little table to sit at, but that'll be fine. Oh look, a truth, wrong, lies. Look at the size of the box, it'll be fine. We don't need a lot of space. It's not like we need to play on the floor or something like that. Ridiculous lies. Number three is Port Royal. Port Royal is a really fun push your luck game by Alexander Fister. We're gonna be drawing out these pirate cards and these cards can have a whole bunch of different things. They can have pirates which might help you fend off other pirate ships. There are pirate ships which you can then trade with to get money and then you can also use that money to buy other crew members. And then some of those crew members will have different symbols on them and those symbols will allow you to usually do quests. This is all in the hope of getting points. The first player to 12 points wins this game. It's a great little push your luck game, but where's the lie? Well, I'm specifically talking about the Port Royal Big Box because... This is not a very big box. This box is medium size at best. This is like a normal box. This isn't a big box. How dare you lie? Oh no, help, I've lied and I can't get up. I should be able to sleep in big box versions of games. Have you seen the big box version of like Alhambra? You could fit a family of four in there. Lies. Alexander Fister is messing up because number two is Boone Lake. 
strictly because there is no lake in Boone Lake. Why do you have to lie? This is a game where you're exploring this uninhabited land and you are going around and establishing different outposts and settlements and all these different kinds of things, raising cattle, putting out tiles. Really, really fun game. There's tons of different cards to play with. All those cards stack and give you bonuses. It's really, really fun and we like it a lot, but there is not one lake in the game. There is a river. Call it Boone River, Alex. There's a river running right through the board and that river actually matters in the game because you are going down the river and that river gives you bonuses and it also times out the game. It looks really nice going through the board and, and it serves a mechanical purpose, but there's no lake. Where's the lake? Why did you call this game Boone Lake? Also, also don't, don't at me down in the comments. I know that one of the little areas is called Boone Lake and that's probably why it's called, but why call it Boone? There's literally a lake on the box. There's no lake on that board. Why call it Boone Lake? Call it Boone River. Don't, don't at me down. Like, I know, I've played the game before. I know there's a little problem. It's called Boone Lake. I'm aware of that. There's also one called Unknown. Why not call it Unknown Lake? Cause there's no freaking lake. Don't at me in the comments. Number one is Calico. They say cats have nine lives. Well, maybe they also have nine lies. Calico is a super cute little game where you are putting out these tiles that make up a patchwork quilt and you are trying to attract kittens to that patchwork quilt. Oh my gosh, this is so freaking cute. And this game is pretty tough despite the fact there's not very many rules to the game. There's a lot of really crunchy decisions. And look at all these cats. It's got this wonderful Beth Sobel art. It's absolutely incredible and so, so cute. And the game is really fun, but it's all a lie because here's the box cover. Calicos are a specific kind of cat and that is not a calico. This is a calico. I'm just disappointed. So that is five games that are lying to you. Down in the comments below, let me know what other games are lying to you. What games try to perceive themselves as something that they're not? What games have something on the cover and you're like, that's not what this game is? You let me know down in the comments below. Make sure to like the video while you're here, share it and subscribe if you haven't already and have a truthful day. <laughs> Mary, Mary, Mary. I'm trying to do a bit, Mary. Mary, I'm trying to do a bit. I'm trying to do a bit, Mary. <laughs> Here, stop licking my head. Thank you so much for watching that ultimately very, very silly video. We obviously love all these games and this is very tongue in cheek. We want to give a big shout out to our channel sponsors, Restoration Games, Lucky Duck Games, Board Game Geek. Uh, none of these companies lie. And we want to give a big shout out to Evan Miller, who is a sponsor for the Brothers Murph for the month of October. Evan has a YouTube channel called Small World Gaming, where he does silent unboxings, which I actually find very, very relaxing, where it's just nice music and unboxing with no talking. It's really, really awesome. Make sure to check it out down in the link in the description below. Have a wonderful rest of your day and don't lie.